Okay, guys, thanks for coming out. A um, couple things to get started. First, want to uh, wish best of luck to Coquise and Steve as they start their seasons. Uh, women's team tonight and then the men's on Wednesday. Looking forward to uh, watching both of those seasons unfold. Um, our guys, we had a good bye week um, academically. You know, certainly going out to SC on a Wednesday, missing classes Wednesday, missing classes Thursday. Uh, these guys had some catching up to do. I thought our guys did a good job of, uh, of doing that. You know, it's, it's later in the semester now and a lot of things are coming due. So a, a big academic load on these guys right now and I think they've done a good job stepping up. Um, and then we had some good work, all different kinds of work for different guys. Certain guys needed rest, certain guys needed reps. So whether you needed rest or reps, uh, I think the guys got it. And now we get ready for what might be one of the hottest teams in America right now, winning four straight and uh, really playing very complimentary football uh, when you watch the way their defense, offense, and special teams has been performing. So great challenge, but I'm excited about the opportunity. Good to be back home in our stadium. Uh, our kids have worked their tails off to try to correct the things that we can correct now. Um, try to get healthy. We've had some really, really intense efforts by guys to try to get better. Um, you know, who knows what this week of practice will hold, but I think we'll be in, in a better place health-wise than we've been, and uh, that, should, that should help. But as like I said, they're really a talented football team. So uh, when you look at their team, really, really good offensively. Um, the Brosnan, the quarterback, is uh, certainly a, a good player, very, very efficient. He knows what he wants to do in their offense. Uh, the running back, Taylor, who um, I think is really one of the best running backs in our league. Very patient, reminds me of Kyle. Um, you know, running similar type runs. He understands how to run them. He's patient, and then he is very explosive and tough. Uh, Jackson, the receiver, number nine, is, uh, you know, a really, really talented wide receiver. So certainly have our hands full. Gigantic offensive line, two big tight ends. They really have a complete offense. Defensively, you know, uh, Coach Heatherman's doing a great job out there, as I knew he would. Uh, one of my favorites to work with uh, when he was here. Uh, you know, you look, we know some of the guys. Jod Joyner, when I first came back here, uh, we had recruited him for a cup of coffee there at the end of recruiting. Uh, really a dynamic player, won the game with a, with a sack fumble the other day. Uh, Lindenberg, the linebacker, is is uh, really a good football player. You could tell he's the heart and soul, runs the operation. And then Wally, the corner, I think, is an NFL player. So at all three levels, they're talented. Uh, big, big defensive front. They understand. And as I said, they're well coached. And then special teams, um, you know, they're really consistent. They know what they want to do. Uh, they have two really good specialists in, in, their, in their field goal kicker who's Got a huge leg, and I guess was in a little bit of a slump to start the beginning of the season, but has really come on like gangbusters here. And I think it's six or seven in a row now. So uh, he seems to be on track. And their punter is, a, is an experienced guy that uh, knows what, what to do within their scheme. So really, as I said to, to open, they're one of the hotter teams in college football right now. And we're bringing them here. It's time to go. You know, we, we, had, our, we had our break. We had an opportunity to get to get healed up, and now it's uh, it's time to go compete. So, I'll try to help you with anything I can. When you're uh, going up against a defensive coordinator and Corey, who obviously is so familiar with your personnel, I guess how does that affect the game planning and, and adjustments that you have to make to stay one step ahead when he's when he knows you guys well as he does? Yeah, I mean Corey's an excellent coach, um, and knowing the personnel certainly helps him a little bit. But Corey Corey knows what he's doing, and he's going to try to take away the things we do. Um, that's just going to be a matter of whose players play the best. Uh, that's that's going to be the key. We'll put him in position. He'll put him in position, and then we got to go be physical. We got to be tough. Um, that's how we play, right? It's uh, that's that's what we count on. And you know what they've done a great job in is taking care of the football and taking the football away. Right now in their winning streak, they're plus nine in turnovers, turnover margin. Overall, they're plus twelve, but in this four-game streak, they're plus nine. And you know, when you're when you're having that kind of success, holding on to the football and taking the ball away, uh, it generally leads to victory. So certainly, that's going to be a key to the game. But how does that happen? It, who plays harder? Who plays tougher? Uh, and then, obviously, obsessing about the football. That's that's what both programs do. So there's a lot of similarities. How the game will be approached? And you know, we got to go coach it and play it. And who does that the best will win. 
obviously going against his former team. How do you anticipate he'll handle the emotion, and do you think he'll be playing with something to prove? Yeah, well, I hope I hope he handles the emotion fine. I don't think he has anything to prove. I think uh, you know it's worked out for both teams. You know, I don't I don't feel that way. I, I can't speak for Ethan, but look, this is a game one that we need to we need to play our very best to win, and that's what we're going to set out to do. What have you guys worked on defensively, and what gives you hope that you guys can make some fixes that uh, have been kind of plaguing you? Well, I think first of all, uh, several of those guys that were playing really banged up. Uh, are going to feel a little better. Are they going to be well? I told you that isn't going to happen for you know until they have six or eight weeks at the end of the year. But they're going to feel a little better, so that'll help. Um, and then we, you know, we fundamentally went back to square one and started working on things that, uh, and our guys really bought in, really wanted to do it. They're frustrated just like like we are, and uh, we went back to work together. And and I think that uh, we've we figured a few things out. We got to just go play that way now on Saturday. But we have another. Three days of practice to do, and, and I'm looking forward to doing that, uh, you know, and being ready to play on Saturday. The offense the past couple of weeks has, has looked more efficient, a little bit more explosive. Where do you see this unit now after a rough couple of games that are kind of midseason? Well, I think we're getting better every week. You know, even in the Nebraska game, we did some good things. We just didn't score points. And obviously, you got to score points to be an effective offense. So, but um, I think we're getting better, and that's the key, right? The the nose is pointed up. We just got to keep it there. Got to keep getting better every day. And where that stacks up against a really, really good uh, Minnesota defense, that that'll be that'll find out on Saturday. How important is it for this program to make a bowl game this season to show some progress after last year? Yeah, I'm not I'm not even worried about a bowl game. I know that that's probably a fan's concern right now. Every ounce of my being is focused on today, game planning, Minnesota, and uh, we'll, we'll take it day by day. I'm not going to get into those bigger picture questions because, quite honestly, all they do is steal from now, and uh, now is pretty important. Is there be how confident do you feel that this team can make a bowl game? Yeah, again, now you'd be stealing from now, right? Let's, let's live in the here and now. Go ahead. That uh, was very, yeah. very, <laughs> very, very nice of you guys. You kind of – Looked like Kyle took a shot. Kyle Manungai took a shot to the head at the end of USC. Um, how's he feeling, and is he going to be good to go? Yeah, that'll be on the uh, availability report, as everything is each week. Uh, I think that's the beauty of that system is that you know you kind of post that so everybody knows exactly what's going on. And um, but uh, yeah, we'll we'll make sure that we're we're prepared the very best we can be. In the time that Corey worked for you, I guess what stood out about him as a coach and the kind of the way he connected with his linebackers. Well, Corey Wright, to start with, is an incredibly detailed football coach, very passionate, so he connects with his players. He helped his players get better. So when you're detailed and you're passionate, that usually is the case. Yeah, real, uh, real fine football coach. Just touching on the offense again, uh, last year it seemed like that there was a lot of clock control. You guys were putting together long drives when you were able to move the ball. This past year, maybe a little bit more explosive. Um, s some of the drives have been kind of more in three, four minutes. Is that where you want to see the offense? Are you okay with those short kind of drives as long as they end up in points, or would you rather shorten the game with long, sustained drives? Yeah, I'll take both. Yeah, if we could, if we could have uh, some explosives and then have some sustained drives that eat up clock and – uh, again, it's all about playing complementary football, right? The better you're playing on defense, the more uh, you don't mind quicker drives, right? But again, you hit it on the head, right? What is an effective offense is an offense that scores points. So how you score them, uh, you know, you're not going to get too picky on that. We do have an identity, but again, if, if we take shots over the top and we hit them, you know, I'm not going to turn them back in. I'll, I'll keep them. You touched on the turnover mar Minnesota's turnover margin being so good. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that a byproduct of doing things schematically, defensively, or just taking the ball away and protecting the ball? Simple as that. Well, I think they play really hard. I think, yes, they have a very good scheme. Um, but right now they're playing very, very well together. They have a, a, um, a way that they're playing very hard. And as I've always told every defense I've ever coached, you get lucky in relation to how hard you play, right? So some would say, oh, the ball's on the ground. Well, you made, you made your luck. You tackled extra hard. You ran to the football extra hard. And you had more people there when the ball came out, 
right? It's the same things we talk about. Are we quite at the level? No, not yet. But we're getting there. We'll get there. Tomorrow is election day. How do you make players available uh, to, to be able to vote? And do you do any kind of civic education on, on the voting, the importance of voting, how, how to make an educated vote? Yeah, we'll talk about it as a team. Um, you know, my biggest thing is you can't ever take it for granted, right? I mean, it's one of the great things about our country. And I think young people have to really understand the sacrifices that have been made so we can vote. And it can never be lost on our, on, on forget our young people, on everybody. Um, you know, because we had a bye week, I did early voting, which was something I've never done. I went and voted on Saturday, which was pretty cool, right? And literally 10 minutes. Um, so it, I'll tell you what, I think it's been more, it's easier for people to vote. And I think there's no excuse not to. I mean, you have that right and that privilege in this country. And yeah, well, it's only one vote. Well, if everybody thinks that way, then they're all one vote. And uh, I, want, I want our guys to understand that. So we talk about it, and we will talk about it again tomorrow. But there's plenty of time to get to the – plenty of places to vote around here. And some of them do write-in ballots, and some of them go out and, and vote in person. But uh, I think our team understands it, but I'll make sure I remind them. Yeah, so, guys, I appreciate it. Again, good luck to, to uh, Coquise and Steve. Looking forward to seeing that get started, and uh, we'll see you guys on Saturday.